your name is Chip? Yeah. Um, can I call you Chip or a professor? Let you know. <laughs> um, the current president, President Park, is the daughter of two dictators ago. They were assassinated, mother and father. And she worked her way through the National Assembly and got elected. And uh, people of democratic tendencies and people who are progressive were opposed to her, very afraid of her, that the daughter of the dictator would just bring it all back. Well, she won the election narrowly, and the oppression um, is starting to take place again. There's uprisings all over Korea. There's labor revolts. There's people, farmers whose land are being taken from them to build power lines and power plants, and they're rebelling. And they're massive. There's thousands of Koreans are great at direct action. I don't think there's anybody else that's like them. They just, they're all, they've been doing it forever. They've been suffered massacres and the whole thing. Well, it just been revealed recently that that election was tampered with by the Korean intelligence and security forces. And now there are massive uprisings going on as we speak right now in the last couple of weeks, headed by the Catholic Priests Association of Korea. They've condemned the election and they're demanding her resignation. Has anybody seen anything about this in the paper? No, Absolutely you won't. No. I haven't seen anything about this. Not in our papers. The Nation magazine, you know, here and there. There was something in the Nation? Mm -hmm. uh, and very little even over there. What comes out in the papers, in the papers they are controlled by the government and corporations. It's just like here. So what was reported um, was they didn't focus on the potential illegality of this election. They focused on a sermon that a priest gave on a Sunday with hundreds and hundreds of people there. And he, at the very end of the sermon, uh, he was saying that this election was rigged and you know she should resign or come clean, have an investigation. And at the end, he made a, a reference about North Korea. And he, he, somebody, he had had in his head or somebody asked him, you know, well, when North Korea torpedoed that ship a few years ago, um, you know, North Korea is at fault. And what he said was, well, for 60 years, America and the Republic of Korea, South Korea, have doing, been doing joint naval operations right off the coast of North Korea. They're all over the place. They're flying drones over there and spy planes over there. And they send bombers over this island. He said, what do you think America would do if they built bases uh, off the coast of California or the East Coast? And the people just blurted out, shoot! And he goes, that's what the North Koreans did. Well, the government picked up on that and called him and all the priests and the churches, communist sympathizers, because symp that's the label they put on them all the time. You know, Northern, Northern, North Korean sympathizers. And have totally avoided the issue of the illegality of the election. You, know, you get the same thing happening all over again. And people are basically fearful. And I think the South Koreans have such, the ones in the cities anyway, um, I called it commercialism on steroids. They have a very, very high standard of living, and they live on credit cards. They're creditors, just like ours. But, um, and I think they're afraid of losing that. So they, not the people in the cities are not the activists. It's the people that are out in the countryside and the villages who are standing up and fighting, and, and it's not only the Catholic Church now, all the other churches, denominations, and the Buddhists have joined together to condemn this President Park and call for her resignation. So this is really getting very dicey over there. But they It'll don't make Jeju part of that. Pardon me? They don't bring Jeju into that. No, no. Why not? Yeah, we don't know about it. 
Uh, the, the Catholic Church certainly does. They, their bishops have been sending priests there. And yeah, from St. Andrew's Hill. Yeah, especially the Jesuits. <coughs> the Jesuits have had four or five priests and a brother there for a couple of years. I got to know them very well, but... Yeah, it is... You have thought so hard about this. Why isn't Jeju on the table as something for people who want to bring down the government are willing to mention? Is it like a rape? I mean, is it, is it that it was so bad that to bring it up makes you look unpatriotic? Yeah, that's a big part of it. Is it it's, it's a sufficiently violent act of oppression that becomes unmentionable? Yeah. Yeah, that's part of it. I, I really think so. And people will tell you that. It's just better to forget the past and go to the future. Let's leave the past back. Let's not deal with it. And there are others who are saying you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You can't pretend it didn't happen and go to the future. We, we have to accept this. It's, it's the same, same thing as the Holocaust, you know. Uh, but there were enough Jewish people outside of the country. They weren't influenced by, by, by Germany in yeah. the escape that they pushed it. And you don't have the same thing in the, the Koreans. And the other part of it is that in 60 years, South Korea came from peasantry, nothing, to one of the leading economic like industrial China. powers in the world. More impressive. More impressive than More China. Impressive. It happened so fast. And how did it happen? Well, we basically governed the country. Um, the, Korea is created in the image and likeness of the United States of America in every way, except that <coughs> they don't make any bones about dictatorships and oppression and this kind of stuff. They, they just do it. Well, we, we have the same sort of thing, and not quite, but in fact, we have the same sort of thing, but we just don't give it the same name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind um, of under uh, ideal laboratory conditions. Let's see what we can do with corporate capitalism. Uh, yeah, three or four big families, Daewoo, Samsung, a couple of others, Hyundai, and just let them go. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And what's happening, see that's more pressure, is Samsung, I don't know that we have anything as big as monolithic as Samsung in this country. There's three or four major corporations that do everything. Samsung is enormous. They, 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 everybody here thinks they do electronics, TVs, refrigerators, whatever. That's a tiny piece of what they do. They're contractors, military industrial complex. They own land, they develop how, you know, uh, well, their housing things are skyscrapers. They all live like bees, like in China and Japan. Um, and they do heavy machinery, they do, I mean, they're in everything. And they basically, the people there know it. They call it the Republic of Samsung to make fun of what's happening there. And what Samsung has been doing, and this is where a lot of people in the labor movement are rising up, Samsung's been laying off people or cutting them to half time so they don't have to pay them benefits and this kind of thing. People can't live on that. And then when the people complain, they bring in Vietnamese to do work. And just like Everybody else now, where the Koreans were manufacturing a lot of the electronics, guess what? It's going to China and going to other third world countries. So they got the people, it just, it's a stranglehold. The whole culture is it's just like here. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's yeah. interesting you show in the film the, this big environmental conference that happened at Jeju Island, and there was the, the proposal that many of us heard about here, and you had U.S. environmental groups like the Sierra Club that tend not to say much about our biggest consumer of petroleum and creator of Superfund sites and destroyer of the world, namely the Pentagon, opposing a U.S. military base. You got all the environmental groups around the world opposing this, this military base. Uh, and the impression that I got and the impression left by the film was that it wasn't so much cognitive dissonance or disability, it was corruption. Uh, it was the sponsorship of the conference by Samsung. I mean, what, what do you, what explains that vote in your mind? I was, I was there, okay? And only once was I able to get into the General Assembly and I, I couldn't film. The film that I used here, part of it came from the IUCN themselves. They posted it online and I just went and took it. 
And uh, one of the women uh, who was part of the delegation uh, with Ron Engel, and there were three or four women, they were attorneys, two from the United States and one from Korea and another one from somewhere else. One of them had a small camera like David's, a video, you could tell the difference in the camera. Um, but I was there, and, and what happened was exactly that. Samsung is the major contractor for the base and the major fund, uh, source of funds for the IUCN was instrumental in bringing the IUCN to Jeju. Um, you have to wonder what was in Samsung and Korean government's minds bringing the ICU in there four miles from Kangjong village. It's four miles. You can walk there. Well, okay? don't you think it's a, it's a, I don't even know what is the word for it, like arrogance, <laughs> you know, like, like. Well, here's what happened. Like, Look what we can do. Yeah, that, that's definitely from Samsung and, and the Korean government, it's arrogance. But to get back to what David was getting at, um, they at first wouldn't even allow the villagers to be outside the building, much less put a table inside, and they, they wouldn't allow it. They never did get a table inside. But there was so much pressure from people in the conference that they finally allowed the villagers to be outside, and I was outside with them, and they had banners and signs and posters and drawings on the concrete and everything else, and they were dancing and singing all day long and talking to people as they were coming in. Uh, but they were not, were not allowed inside. For several days, this was festering underneath this entire conference. People were trying to force it to the surface and get the leadership that were up at that table, at Diaz up there, to put it to the vote. And they wouldn't do it. And finally the pressure was so much, and word was getting out, that the head, the president of the IUCN, was forced to allow it to come to the floor. And in a very contentious debate, before they even talked about it, they had this thing about rules that he said, we're not going to allow the media in here for this discussion. Oh my gosh. People go, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a democratic process. This is violating everything about the IUCN. We have never in our history said the press couldn't be in here when we're having our del deliberations. Well, fight back and forth. It was a Korean government behind this and Samsung. They didn't want any part of that. Finally, they had to give in because the way the IUCN is set up, there are two chambers. There's the, the states, the governments, and then there are the non-governmental organizations, of which there were 267 or 269. When they have a debate and people spoke for and against, um, they took the vote. And you have to have a majority of both chambers for anything like that to pass. They had almost, I think they had all of the non-governmental organizations <laughs> were saying support the resolution, were against the base. And the people in the government side, and this is what people were telling me afterwards who were part of this, in deference to the sovereignty of the Korean government, who pleaded, and I didn't put their speech in here, I, I have it, but I decided I'm not even going to give them a chance to speak here. But, um, the Korean representative pleaded with the conference to respect the, so the sovereignty of the Republic of South Korea and to not interfere in this national issue. And uh, most of the nations uh, either agreed with the South Koreans were abstained, they wouldn't vote. And therefore, there was not enough to pass the resolution. That's what happened. Aside from the fact that they would have more sovereignty without the domination of the US military, what does sovereignty right. have to do with right. it at all? I mean, can you not oppose a policy of a government uh, on its land without violating its sovereignty? You're the one that can answer this question as well as anybody. <laughs> Well, the same thing occurred to me. 
Uh, he said, it, it, what they, that was really code, and what it meant is, please, 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 you're going to make us look very bad. Yeah. We are your hosts. Don't do this to us, please. And yeah. people listen to that. Yeah. I can understand uh, people listening to that. But as I mentioned at the end, and I, I tried to do it as delicately as I could, they finally caved in. Um, and instead of standing up for the protection of the environment and the abuse of human or human rights, they cowered to the Korean government and Samsung under this national security. We need this to protect ourselves. Yeah, it's crazy. It does not make any sense at all. You know, well, the people like us anyway, but other people think it does, I guess. No, it's really good observations. One of the things that um, that I, I like to make sure uh, comes out is that, as Bruce Gagnon said, everything is connected here. There's environmental issues, there's the war, peace, militarism issue, and there's the denial of human rights, uh, of really abuse of human rights. And so ma no matter what you're lobbying for out there, if you're an environmentalist, this ought to be a significant concern that UNESCO, World Heritage Sites, um, national parks, de dedicated national parks by the Korean government, the coral forests, that temperate coral forest, it's all being destroyed. Mm -hmm. And this was supposed to be Jeju, a no construction zone whatsoever, like that along the coast. Um, so it, it's all connected. And then underneath all of this, that I, because I'm kind of an activist too, I don't go getting arrested, I, I need to stay and be able to keep my camera and pointed at things, but I'm against war, uh, I'm against this war machine that we have in this country, I'm against the War Department, it's not a Defense Department, it's a War Department, and I say to people, um, are you aware that the United States military has the largest carbon footprint on the planet. The largest consumer of oil and polluter on the planet. And so what's that connected to? Well, it's not only connected to pollution and climate change and everything else, it's very directly connected to what's going on in the Middle East, what's going on in Africa, anywhere that we think there's oil, it's the extraction of resources by force, to keep this thing going. And then the question of how much does it cost? And people are not aware that it's whatever 57% of our discretionary budget spending, but the total amount of money we spend on all of this is a trillion dollars a year, I guess. Somewhere in that area, a trillion dollars every year spent on this advance of the empire. And I think it's important for people to make those connections, that there's a root cause here, and um, it's, whatever you want to call it, capitalism, and capitalism using military force to get whatever they want, and then they corrupt governments, and to me, that sounds like a definition of fascism. Absolutely. Well, it's been going on for quite some time, you know. I, I, uh, we're responsible for what's going on in all over the world. And this is something that, you know, when you get groups of people, just like you folks, you're sharing what you already know, what you already believe, but in a lot of these larger groups, there might be only three or four people that get that big picture. But because they share, and, and that's what's so great about the discussion afterwards, and why mm -hmm. it's this thing has got to get into colleges and high schools and universities yeah, as part of a, a curriculum a learning experience because the discussion afterwards is really what's important, what you take away from something like this. It's this understanding of, oh my God, this is what it's all about. 